Yeah, man, this is Danny Dreadlock telling you say, the time has come for the lion story to be heard, you know? Here, there, are everywhere. Have no fear. The lion story. And this is the lion voice. Scene production. Every time. Yeah. I'm a Gideon. Got a cosmic forces. Good over evil. Yeah, for the ghetto youth. I'm very honored, in fact, to bring forward our guest and also honored to bring forward the topic. I have said for a long time I work on a lot of different things behind the scenes. And this is one of those things that I've been privileged and blessed to work with, you know, almost over a year now as an advisory capacity, um, helping to draft the constitution, uh, consultation on uh, development plans and all of the different things for this institution that we're gonna talk about tonight, a uh, vital institution within the Rastafari community. And we have the very first appointed public relations officer of that institution, uh, someone who is also a board member of the Leonard Howell Foundation, someone who's also a lecturer at the University of the West Indies, someone who also carries the name of Dr. Uh, a brethren I know for many years now, seen the works uh, on the back of field front line, a brethren who recently now has been chatting to Ghana. So we also have to touch the Ghana repatriation talk. You know, we can't leave out that part there. Who am I talking about? Family, I'm talking about Dr. Michael Barnett. Welcome. Dr. Barnett is here with us live from Kingston, Jamaica. Greeting, my brother. How's everything? Yes, give thanks, uh, Raskwazi. Yeah, man. Everything is wonderful, you know? Yes, 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 yes. Welcome to Lion Talk. You know, this is our platform. We're here building on the second largest search engine on the planet. We feel like Rastafari need to be represented. So um, it's an honor to have guests of the high stature here with us this evening um, to talk about what we're talking about, which is the formation of the Rastafari mansion and organization in Jamaica. But before we go into that part, I do want the I just introduce the I self. Who is Dr. Barnett? Where the I born? Where the I from? Uh, you know what the I does in terms of work because I want them to know who the I is before we we jump into the topic. Well, very quickly, I would just say that I am a Pan Africanist who believes in the upliftment and empowerment of African people worldwide and um, doing that through the ideology and the mantle of Rastafari. But having said that, I also see education as very vital because, you know, His Imperial Majesty, Ailes Lassie, set the example by carrying the portfolio of Minister of Education throughout his entire reign. And that was deliberate because he saw that education is the tool for the upliftment and empowerment of people, uh, of, of a nation. And in fact, that is why it's no accident that his gift to Jamaica when he came here in 1966 was a school, the Haile Selassie High School, which bears his name, and which, you know, some of I and I on the ground here in Jamaica are trying to uplift and to improve in its own way, um, both materially and in terms of curriculum and, you know, um, just in basically um, trying to empower and to um, enlighten staff and students, you know. But it's, it's, a, it's a mission in which through education, um, enlightenment, upliftment, you know, anything is possible. And we as a people sometimes um, forget our legacy, forget the African legacy yes. uh, of building civilization, of our contribution to the planet, um, of setting a foundation. Um, because of the transatlantic slave trade, you know, I and I have suffered 
um, psychologically, have suffered um, in terms of health and in many ways. And, and that is why we also have a reparations movement that includes uh, repatriation because yes. we seek to repair the damage that has been done to us as a people and as a nation. But having said that, um, we have much to be grateful for. And if we really are able to realize what we've achieved in the past, I believe we can fulfill our full potential because my perspective is, is that as a people, we have yet to fulfill our full potential, my brother. We're still striving, yes. still rising but we haven't reached the heights, in my opinion, that we were at in the past, centuries ago. Um, Dia is a very wise man. And I, 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 like I said, I, I don't want it to be just two talking heads here. So just give a little bit about your, your background. Were you born in Jamaica? Um, you're a, a lecturer at the University of the West Indies. We have a lot of young people who watch. I want them to know, you know, when you're delivering this message. Yeah. You know that well, this is someone who is rooted in the culture. This is someone well, who. Here, from, uh, go on, go on, go here's go my on. thing, Rasquazi. Yes, sir. What I'm going to say is, I was born in the West, but what is important to me, yes, in really important, is that I am a African that is presently domiciled in the West. So, yes, the, the, just you know the fact that I'm born in the West, whether it's Jamaica whether it's the US, whether it's the UK yes, or yes, whatever. Yes, uh, yes, to yes. me, that is not the pivotal issue. The pivotal issue mm -hmm. is that we are Africans that happen to be domiciled in the West yes. for reasons none of our own making. So I don't like to place too much emphasis on... Okay. The fact is I was born outside of the continent and, yes. and, and oh, this is oh, an oh, issue yeah that in terms of restoration for myself why i've been making several trips to the continent myself because for me it's it's a kind of therapy it's 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 psychological therapy for what has happened to my ancestors and and to reaffirm my african identity it's important when i take a trip to the motherland for many reasons so definitely so first and foremost i want to say from an identity perspective the key thing is that we are Africans that happen to be domiciled in the West. I think we make West. too much out of exactly we where are, exactly we are. So in terms that becomes an issue of separation. I don't care if somebody happens to be born in the U.S. or yes. you're born in St. Kitts so you're born in Trinidad or whatever. If the you are Africa, just drop us off at different spots. Yes. Um, talk to us about your journey to, to become a lecturer at the University of the West Indies, you know, because that is not a simple thing. And a lot of people might not know that we have Rastafari in these type of positions, you know, um, yeah. because typically yeah. we see Rastafari as just artists. So talk about that journey. It's, it's a combination of things, Rastafari. I mean, first and foremost, I have to give thanks to my parents who uh, who have transitioned, but at least I had got into university um, at the time that, you know, um, one of my parents transitioned and I was able to graduate and my other parent saw that, but they were very, they were exemplars of the, 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 the importance of a strong education. They were exemplars of being um, literate, you know, of, of reading, of valuing knowledge and trying to um, uplift one's mind. So they set an example um, and I followed through. And then, you know, um, my parents were, were, were also um, part of the Black Power movement. Okay. The 60s. So, for instance, when I was just 11 years old, my birthday present was uh, the biography of Marcus Garvey. Wow. And then the next birthday, you know, I get the autobiography of Malcolm X and so forth. So this is where, you know, the kind of um, influences then that I, I, I grew up in. So being a Pan-Africanist was just a natural direction in a way. And my father was very adamant that the black people to uplift themselves and empower themselves must be with a Pan-African ethos. Yes. You know? And he was very clear about that. So, uh, you know, I, I really have to give thanks to my parents, by and large, for the pathway that I have traversed. 
And uh, in, you know, reading and so forth, I realized that how powerful education is. And then I decided to become an educator myself. But uh, an educator that, you know, was knowledgeable in their own right. So um, essentially to inspire the youth, inspire the next generation, our educators are very important. And, and we just definitely. have to bear this in mind. So there's different ways of inspiring people. We can do definitely. it so artistically. We can do so as educators. We can do so in many shapes and forms. But uh, I, there has to be a group of people on the ground inspiring the next generation. Because the truth is, is that without a powerful um, next generation, then, you know, our future is limited. So the battle is being fought on many fronts, um, and it's uh, it's it's an all-encompassing, um, if you like, battle. What I consider it as a battle of sort, because we are also dealing with external forces that um, don't necessarily um, look, in, uh, you know, are favorable to our self-interest. Yes, definitely, and I think it's so crucial because I have a similar story. I grew up in a Pan-African home. Um, you know, where education was stressed. That's how I, I went into law school. So we have a very similar um, journey. And I know that, um, well, before I go into your books, because I want to also let the people know you're also an author, um, what area of, of study do you do at, at the University of the West Indies? What is your area? Well, my area of specialization is critical race theory um, okay. coming out of sociology. Sociology is where I got my PhD in. Okay. Um, that was my major in undergrad as well. So you see it there? Yes. See. So, you know, yeah. looking at the world through the spectrum of society and how society impacts the individual and so forth. But my area, my area of uh, emphasis is uh, African diaspora studies. Okay. So looking at uh, also the various movements, Pan-African movements that arose from us in the West, because the truth of the matter is, is that because our ancestors found themselves in this very dis, um, oppressed or downpressed state, um, having been enslaved and so forth, Pan-Africanism actually came grew from the African diaspora as opposed to the continent. And then in a way, we have introduced this Pan-African concept to our brothers and sisters on the continent because we have to realize that certainly prior to colonialism, they were uh, existing as ethnic groups. You know, they're right. And, and still today, our African yes, brothers kingdoms, are identified kingdoms. ethnically. But yeah, the they, thing is, they call is, them tribes, but they were really kingdoms, many kingdoms. Yeah, many kingdoms. But here's the thing is that once those countries, the, 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 the nations have been transcribed by Europeans after the Berlin Conference of 1884, 1885, as you know, and what was done deliberately, those borders that we have on the continent of Africa have been drawn by the former European colonial powers. So what's happened is they deliberately pushed particular ethnic groups together, okay, in one nation. Uh, and what has happened is if we analyze that, it, it, it brings the, the distinct um, possibility or susceptibility to ethnic tension and ethnic rivalry. Because instead of looking at the welfare of the nation as a whole, you have some groups that are saying, we want to be in power. We want the, yes. the riches of this nation. And we don't really care so much about the other ethnic groups. So for Nigeria, for instance, it was in me, actually, I never realized the degree of ethnic tensions between the Yoruba and the Igbo, for instance, yes. Yes. until I happened to go to University of London in England, where there was a whole host of Nigerians studying there. And what became apparent to me, my brother, was when I was in the dining hall, um, the Aibos were on one side of the dining hall and the, 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 the Europeans were on the other. And I had to ask, why can't, why aren't you guys, why aren't you sitting together? What's going on? And the Igbos told me flatly, we don't mix with those Europe people. Yes, we don't want nothing yes. to do with them. 
when we go to the Yorubas, they said, sure, we can't deal with the Igbos and stuff. And so first hand. So this yeah. is me as an 18-year-old. I said, wow. I, 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 Yeah, my Gideon got the cosmic forces. Good day for evil. Yeah, for the ghetto youth worldwide. Yeah. I see the youths nowadays, they growing up. Wanna know the truth, they wanna know what's up. They got no fear now, they call you bluff. They asking questions cause they had enough Why? Some gone straight cause times is tough Some walk with the machine ready to bust All my give me things get dangerous No need to get things get dangerous On the battlefield things get dangerous Them carry RPG, M16 Got a problem to wipe out your whole team For American dream, them get scanned and lost Them put us into the ghetto, try abandon us Cause we the remnant of the first sons of Kush Warrior tribes, we not the ones to push Just look into them history, see we rebellious That's cause them systems so unjust Take the shackles and chains, change them to handcuffs Release your physical frame, them want your brain Them a vampire looking for blood to drain Highly classic, come and break every chain Bob Marley tell them, now we tell them again, yo we tell them this ain't a game, but this is how I'm a give the end, you got to mentally train. Yeah, I tell them this ain't a game, but this is heaven on earth, hard go burn in the flames. Yeah, I tell them this ain't a game, I say I gotta play your hate, cause some things gotta change. I tell them this ain't a game, but this is time for African people to rise. I tell them, earthquake, hurricane, tornado, the wind blows and bring the rains. I got the whole west coast in flames, melt the arctic poles and flood the seas Hurricane force winds blow down the trees, whole earth feel the pain when the bombs release Read your psalms, release David prophecies, Mark Scarvey said look to the east Rastafari's the prince of peace, and Haile Selassie I come conquer the peace yo. They trap the youths with them luxuries to get the ladies, gotta drive Mercedes People killing babies, try to keep us down with AIDS We descended from kings, now we surround with plagues, man I kill them brother I'm to drive the escalates I can't stand Babylon and all the mess they made Teach the youths that them best when them rest in the grave Wolf trick the lion, got the lion a shape Can't reach bones, I unless you learn to behave Got to stand firm cause these is perilous days I tell them, we tell them this ain't a game But this how I'ma give you you got to mentally train yeah. I tell them this ain't a game Or this is heaven on earth, or go burn in the flames yeah. I tell them this ain't a game I say I gotta play your hate cause some things gotta change I tell them this ain't a game or this a time for African people to rise